When do we leave our legacy? I like to ask that question in classes and workshops. And people will often say, well, when we leave the job, when we leave a career, when we leave the earth, when we die. And I say, sure. But what about when I leave this conversation or you leave a meeting or you leave an interaction? We are leaving our legacy every day in small ways, a concept I call breadcrumb legacy. In fact, today is part of your legacy. I'm gonna share a story from my PhD program. I had a professor, I'll call him Professor Kingsley. He taught statistics. Now, most of us were scared of statistics anyway, but he made it worse. He was condescending, intimidating. It was almost like he wanted to embarrass us in front of the class. In fact, it took four and a half hours for the average person to take an exam. One time I found out that he had made a mistake. I realized he'd made a mistake on one of my exams and I should have had a higher score. When I pointed it out to him, he said, hmm, you're right, Freed, too bad. And he did not change it. More recently, I went to a funeral, really out of obligation. It was someone I was not very fond of. And a lot of it had to do with because he spent his whole life trying to be a somebody was all about himself, what's in it for him. He had all the right status symbols to be a somebody. But in the end, he really lived an empty life and hardly anyone came to the funeral. We need to remember that our ego is not really our amigo. And that the ego is that part of the brain that mediates between ourselves and reality. Our ego wants to protect us. We need our ego or we won't even be able to get out of bed in the morning. But because technology, everything's focused on becoming a somebody. Who are we? You know, whether it's followers, connections, friends, it's all about becoming a somebody. It's all centered around our role and our ego and our identity. But to live a life worth remembering, we need to shift from role to soul. Ram Das, author of Be Here Now and Still Here Now and other books, he popularized the phrase becoming a nobody. In fact, in 2019, there was a documentary made about Ram Das and his philosophy, his life, called Becoming Nobody. He explains in this documentary how society reinforces identifying with the ego and um, becoming a somebody. And this identification, you know, involves around comparing and competing and usually manifests in some pretty negative behaviors, envy, jealousy, micromanaging, defensiveness. And in this documentary, he also talks about how we often wear masks, these masks that disguise who we really are. And this was all before COVID, masks before COVID. I mean, he says we need to drop those masks in order to be authentic and honest with ourselves and in order to develop our soul. Now, the soul is full of love, compassion, understanding, forgiveness. And those are characteristics that I think are so important now more than ever. The soul is also about others. How might we help others? A perfect example of developing a very intentional breadcrumb legacy is by Marshall Goldsmith. Goldsmith is often known as the father of executive coaches. And several years ago, he attended a workshop put on by Aisha Bursal, author of the book, Designing the Life You Love. And in this workshop, she asked participants to think of who are their heroes and why are they their heroes? And Goldsmith immediately thought of Peter Drucker, often known as the father of modern management, and Drucker's protege, Francis Hesselbein, who is the former CEO of Girl Scouts of America. And uh, Francis is currently 105 and still going strong. When Bursall asked the people and you know Goldsmith why those two people are his heroes, he said, they're smart, they're kind, they're generous, they're focused on others, they give back. So Goldsmith created what he called the Knowledge Philanthropy Project. Goldsmith says, I want to give away all that I know 
to as many people as I can. And I want to do it all free. So he created an application process and he thought that he would have like 16 people. Apply, uh, he would select 16 people, but he had 16,000 applicants, 16,000 people who wanted to be part of this. So he created MG, Marshall Goldsmith, 100. And MG 100 consists of executive coaches who want to learn what Marshall has to teach. And again, there are no rules. Um, it's all free. You can't, it's not done for money. But the idea is Marshall is passing on what he knows with the um, requirement that these people have to pass that on to others free of charge. Uh, as I said, MG100 is now 250 or more going strong. So the whole idea is Marshall wants to give away his wisdom free, share it with the idea that then these people will share it going forward. It's a perfect example of, you know, kind of emptying out. So instead of focusing on himself to become a somebody, no, Marshall says, no, this is all about becoming a nobody by passing it on to others. Now, how do you become a nobody? I say there are three simple steps. One, have an outward focus on others, not on yourself. Two, control the ego. Don't let the ego control you. When you feel the ego taking over, acknowledge it and let go. And three, move beyond your role to develop your soul. Now, every day we have choices. Every moment we have a choice and we can choose to become a somebody or we can choose to become a nobody. But in reality, in reality, choosing to become a nobody is really choosing to become somebody special. Thank you.